All right, hosses. So now that we got Django downloaded and installed, set up properly on our computer, what we can do now is we can create our very first Django project. So this is gonna be the process that you go through anytime you wanna create a new Django website, and that is this. Go ahead and navigate to wherever you wanna create your Django project files, and I'm just gonna stick mine on my desktop, why not, and type Django Admin. So this is a tool that we got whenever we downloaded Django, and it allows us to do a bunch of cool things, and in this video, we're gonna be using this to create the starter files. And these are just the core files that you have to include in every Django website. So the command for that is just start project. So that's what that does. Now the only other thing you need to type after this is you just need to give your project a name. And this is just the name of the directory. So usually this would be something like the new Boston if I was creating it for my website or like hockey website or something like that. But for this tutorial series, I am just gonna name it something super generic website. So there you go, hit enter, and I'll show you guys what it did. So what that just did is it created this directory, website, and if I double click this, we can see that it made some files right in there. Now, I am gonna talk to you guys about what all these files are, but I'm actually gonna open up an IDE and do it because I think it'll be a little bit better. And I'm actually using JetBrains, or excuse me. Well, yeah, JetBrains is the company that makes PyCharm. And this is the coolest IDE in the world. So if you guys want to use the same one, then you can, but you don't need to. You can actually just follow along with this tutorial using Notepad or Sublime or anything you want, and it's going to work fine. But if you want to follow along with me, then just go ahead and click open and navigate to wherever. You just made it and mine was in my desktop website. So hit okay. All right, mate, so that's a little bit better. I like having all my files on the left-hand side and then the content on the right so I can show you guys both things at once. But this is JetBrains and by the way, real quick, if you guys are using um, PyCharm, then what you can do is if you go to File, New Project and click Django, then, <coughs> oh, sorry, I got whooping cough. Then you can just go ahead and give it a name and it just does the exact same thing as we just did. But if you don't, then go ahead and use the command line and boom roasted, good to go. So the first thing I wanna mention is this. This root directory, this one, AKA this one that just got created, you can actually name that to whatever you want. It, the name doesn't really matter, it's just whatever you wanna name it. It's just the container for all of the files inside. So, you know, it doesn't mean anything special to Django. However, the files inside here, their names are important. So we see that we have this directory right here, which is the same name as its root directory. So that's why I said you can rename this one, the parent one, if it gets a little bit confusing, but keep this one the same. So before we get to that, let's go ahead and talk about this file right here, manage.py. By the way, Never edit this file. Never try to add anything to it. Don't delete it. Just kind of ignore it. All this is, this manage.py, it's a program that comes with Django that lets you do a bunch of cool stuff to your project. And it allows you to do things like um, access the database and create users for your website. And we'll learn how to use this later on. But again, this is not a file that we're ever going to want to touch or manage or edit it or anything like that. So that's what that is. Now, if you guys are like, all right, well, where is the code that we're gonna be working with? Well, we're gonna be working with some of the files in this directory and we're also gonna be creating some other ones. So go ahead and expand this and I'll talk to you guys about all of these. So the first one, this init.py, all this is is a file that tells Python to view this directory as a Python package. Now. There's actually nothing inside here, and that's because you don't even need any code in there. Again, like I said, it just says, hey, Python, this isn't just the normal directory on your computer. This is actually a Python package, so you know, just view it as one. Now, the settings.py file, what I was gonna do before this tutorial is I was like, all right, I'm gonna go through all the settings and explain each one, one by one, but then I was like, if I do that, then people are probably just gonna be like, all right, going to bed now, Django sucks, this is boring. So instead of just trying to explain all of these settings, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually explain 
every single thing as we kind of need it and get to it, I think it'll be a lot better that way and it'll make a lot more sense than rather just trying to pound everything into your brain. But real quick, this file is just the settings and configuration options for your website. So like the overall settings for your entire website. Just think of it like that. Now this next one, urls.py, these are the URL declarations. In other words, it's kind of like the table of contents for your website. That's how people always explain it. So what I mean by this is whenever you go to a website, and let me just, what do I have up here? All right, so whenever you go to a website, you type in, of course, the website's name and then some URL after it. So whenever I type account, it gives me my stream. Whenever I type forum, then it gives me the forum. Whenever I type videos or go to this URL, then it shows me all the videos. So again, this part of the URL tells my website how to behave or what it's supposed to do. Now, most of the time, you're gonna give it a URL and it's gonna return a web page. But sometimes it doesn't return a web page. Sometimes if you go to the URL like logout.php, then it actually just performs some functionality and logs the user out and doesn't just you know give you a web page. So again, what this file is, is basically saying, okay, look at whatever URL the user requested and then perform some functionality. And there's a lot more to it than that, but that's the basic overview of it. Talk more about that later. And this last one, WSGI, this stands for Web Server Gateway Interface. And it's just a special type of web server. And we're gonna learn about that a lot later. Um, don't even worry about it right now, but that's the basic overview of a core Django project. So again, every single website that you have is gonna be composed of all of these files. And again, you never touch this one and we're not gonna be using this one a lot or this one, so it's actually a lot easier. So once we start getting into actually developing it, you guys are gonna see exactly what these do and it's gonna make a lot more sense. But yeah, that's the overview of it. And just to leave you guys with something cool, whenever you install Django and set it up like this, it actually comes with a web server and it's not a full featured web server like you would actually want to host a actual website with it but it comes with like a mi little mini web server that you can use for development so if you just want to boot it up and check out what our website looks like right now then what you need to do is you need to navigate to wherever you created your project so i'm already in my desktop i want to go ahead and navigate to website and just type ls and make sure that you see this your project's name in manage.py. That makes sure that you're in the correct location. And again, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be using this manage tool to boot our web server. So let me just go ahead and clear out of this to make it a little bit prettier. Now in order to do this, type Python manage.py, and actually you don't even need that, manage.py. So this is a tool that we can use. It comes with a bunch of different features. What we're gonna be doing is run server so again we're just going to start that little development server that came with django and it says dun, dun, dun. all right so starting development server at http 127.0.0.1 port 8000 so if you just open up any web browser right now then you can go to this location and you should see this right there so again django came with a test server and right now we have a home page looking beautiful and actually what i do is i actually bookmark this so that's why i have it right there and that way i just don't have to type in the url all the time and that's what i recommend doing since you're going to be going to this page a lot but anyways look at that our very first django website but uh yeah in the next tutorial we're going to be spicing this up and uh it's going to be cool so i'll see you then